In this video, we're going to be building a bigger kid's uh, picnic table. And we're going to be using two by threes and uh, fence pickets that are five eighths of an inch thick. We do have a full set of plans available in our Facebook store. They're just five dollars. Um, it's good to have a set of plans if you don't catch all the dimensions and angles or if we forget to give you uh, we're going to try and give you everything you need to build this without plans. Uh, but, you know, if you feel like buying a set of plans, it helps us out a little bit. They're only a couple bucks. And the one thing that the plans will give you is it will give you a complete materials list. But more importantly, it'll show you how to cut all the parts out to best use that material. Um, so sometimes just saving the expense of one board will actually pay for the plans. Uh, in this case, it's a very simple setup, so you probably uh, don't necessarily need uh, that option. But on some of our more complicated plans, we, we really take the time to figure out how to set our boards up so that we, we yield uh, the, the least amount of waste. And so a lot of times when we're making plans, um, we think about our boards or our materials that we're using. So for example, in this plan, we, we were using some fence pickets and uh, we need three fence pickets for this project. Uh, these fence pickets are cut to 34 and a half inches. Now a fence picket will come to you 72 inches, but they're dog-eared. So if you just want, to, I, I did not want dog-eared corners on my finished bench. So that's why I make it 34 and a half. And if you've watched any of our other videos on building things with fence pickets, you know that's our magic number. We, we, we build a lot of things using that four, 34 and a half inch dimension for that reason. So, uh, so at any rate, uh, our, our finished table will be 34 and a half. So if you wanted to make a bigger table, you certainly could. The only problem is, is if you go bigger than 34 and a half, then you literally double the amount of material it takes. So instead of three fence pickets, because we can get two 34 and a half inch lengths out of one fence picket, if you go any bigger than that, then you're gonna double your material there and you'll need six fence pickets. So, so when we're designing, we're thinking about that, like, geez, if we just made that an inch shorter uh, or, or, you know, or whatever, or if it's two inches, whatever, if we're close, and I think, well, if we just shrink it down just a little bit, then we wouldn't have to go get a whole new board. Uh, so, so, uh, so we really put some thought uh, into how we go about uh, doing our design work when, when we're thinking about building things. All right. So, so at any rate, we need six pieces of fence picket that are 34 and a half uh, for what we're going to build, and then. We're going to need two pieces that are 29 inches. Now I'm using two by threes because I like to use two by threes. It makes the table a little bit lighter. This table when finished will still be plenty heavy, uh, even for an adult to sit at. So don't be scared of that. If you do want to sit at the table with your child, you'll be able to, um, no, no issues there. I'm a big guy and, and this, the, the way this is designed, it'll definitely hold us. Um, so at any rate, I like to use two by threes, but you could certainly take all these dimensions that I'm giving you and do the exact same thing with two by fours. So there's really no difference there. So if, you, if you've if you got some two by fours and you wanna do it with two by fours, you can definitely use the same exact dimensions. Okay, so we have two pieces that are uh, 29 inches. Now these pieces do not get any type of angle cuts to them. All of the rest of the pieces do. So what I do, like on, on, on these two pieces, now these are our cross members, are our seat supports, if you will, on our picnic table A-frame. And these are 36 inches long, all right? And those, we just do an angle cut here at 22 and a half degrees. You could use 22 and a half, you could use 30, you could use 15, you could use really whatever angle you want. Um, you know, you could probably leave them square uh, if you wanted to, but uh, for aesthetics, I like to use 22 and a half degrees, okay? Uh, when I'm building the adult uh, picnic tables, I use 22 and a half degrees, so maybe that's why I just carried it over to the kids' table. So 22 and a half degrees on these, 
and and they're going to go in the opposite direction on each end so we're going to we're going to go this way on this end but on the far end we're going to go this way 22 and a half okay i'll show you that when i actually get the angles applied now on our next two boards those are 23 inches okay and those will hold um our tabletop boards okay which we're our tabletop is going to be made out of these fence pickets um, and the same thing 22 and a half degrees opposite so we're going to go this way on this end on the far end we're going to go this way 22 and a half degrees on both of those and again i'll show you the angle cuts once i actually put the angles on them then for our last uh grouping of boards um we could go 22 and a half degrees again um these are 28 and three quarter by the way and there's four of them these are our legs but uh so we so on my adult size i i go back and forth sometimes i use 22 and a half degrees sometimes i use 30. i don't really know why that is um but in this case i'm gonna say 30 degrees it doesn't truly matter uh all that much uh but for this example the way the plans are drawn the plans are drawn 30 degrees now on our legs we need the angles parallel so so when we have our angle going this way on this side, on the far end, we need it going the same direction. Okay, that's what that's what that parallel means. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and add my 30 degree cuts here. I'm gonna add 22 and a half, 22 and a half. Come back, I'll show you those. And then we'll get to uh, talking about a couple other crucial dimensions and then obviously putting it together. So let me get my angles on here and then We'll proceed from there. All right, we have all of our angle cuts added now. Now you can more clearly see what I was talking about, that 22 and a half degrees here. And then on the opposite side, it's going the opposite direction. And same thing on the, on the tabletop supports, 22 and a half degrees. Uh, again, these are 23s, these are 36s, okay? These are 29s. These, these are our, what hold our two frames together, okay? And then lastly, our legs, which are 28 and three quarter. And then right here at the very tip of our leg, we have that 30 degree uh, miter on both sides, but notice the, on our legs, that miter is going in the same direction. All right. So that takes care of that. Now what we're gonna do is move some stuff off our table, rearrange our parts here a little bit, add some other critical dimensions to some of these parts. Um, to make the assembly process a little bit easier. So let me get my table arranged and cleared out, and then we'll talk about those critical dimensions we need to know about um, to make putting the table together uh, a very simple process. All right, so let's take a look at the various critical dimensions. So what I've done here, this is our seat support, and I've, I've got them standing up on edge, just as if they would be on the picnic table. So see how that point is going up? That's what we need. So we need to measure in from that corner over to seven and a half inches. And we do that on both sides. And you'll see why we need that line here uh, momentarily, but seven and a half inches on our seat support, but just make sure that angle side is going up, okay? So the long edge of the board, you can see this edge of the board is shorter um, because of the way the angle is, all right? And then for our tabletop support, we're gonna do a similar thing, but we're gonna come in from that long edge over to nine and five eighths. And again, we're gonna do that on both sides of the board, that nine and five eighths. And then on our legs here, you can see we have our legs, and then you can see we have uh, how that angle is sitting, you know, up. Um, so all the boards, the angle is, is, is sitting, you know, on in the upside. Um, but on our legs, we want to come from that sharp point up to uh, 15 and a half inches. And again, all these lines will make a lot more sense when we actually go to put this together. One thing I just want to interject here, this is a fairly inexpensive project to make because we're using three fence pickets which at the time of this filming are two dollars and twenty cents and then we're using two by threes uh, for the rest of the construction and two by threes are, are less than three dollars right now so uh it's a fairly 
uh, inexpensive build, but there's a, 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 a high perceived value. So we build a lot of these uh, kid-sized uh, picnic tables. And one of the big selling points we really like to point out is that, yes, it's designed for kids, but it's robust and sturdy enough for adults. And like I said, I'm a big guy myself, and it's even big, you know, it's plenty robust for me. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of kids' picnic tables out there. You'll see some of them seem like, boy, and that's really cheap. Uh, and that's because they're not really built with the adults in mind. You know, if you want to sit there at the table with the kids, and the kids love that. You know, my kids, I've got a bunch of kids. They love it when we sit at the table with them. So to me, that's a big selling point if you're looking at doing this for a profit. Now, one thing I will point out too, in regards to these, because I do do a lot of picnic tables, um, kids picnic tables in particular, is these lines that, uh, and dimensions that I gave you, they're, they're fairly easy to recall, but I actually did create a jig for the leg assemblies okay and and to me if you're going to build if you're if your intent is to build a lot of these and sell them um you probably would want to build your jig so if you if you just go uh on our youtube channel and search out kids picnic table jig i i walk you through the process of how to create your jig so we don't have to add these dimensions uh, but i think what you'll find too is if you have a good memory like i used to um, there's really no need for a jig. The reason I made a jig is so I don't have to memorize all these dimensions. But what you'll see the actual construction process, um, it's just as easy with the dimensions as it would be with a jig. But the only thing is, like I said, with the jig, you don't have to memorize any dimensions. Um, so there, there is that bonus. But as far as putting this together, you'll see it's really simple. Uh, once we've got all of our boards marked out like this. All right. So with that said, let's gather up some two and a half inch screws is what we're going to put this together with primarily. But just keep in mind, we are going to use a few three and a half inch screws. And I always suggest in all of my videos and all of my projects is if we can use a three and a half inch screw, uh, then I would definitely recommend using three and a half inch screws. Now, if you don't have three and a half inch screws, can you do it all with two and a half? Certainly. But if you have the three and a half, use them. Okay. So they're just a little bit, they're a little bit thicker, a little bit longer, a little bit, a little bit stronger. Um, so if we can use it, uh, then we use it. But in this case, because we're putting two, two by threes together, uh, obviously, uh, it's three inches. So we can't use three and a half inch screws. We can only use two and a half. But there's one part of the project where we could use three and a half inch screws, and so we will. All right. So with that said, let me clear off my table here a little bit. We'll arrange some boards. We'll go ahead and put them together for you. Uh, you don't want to watch that boring process. But we'll talk about specifically how we went about putting them together, too. So let me, let me get started on that, and then we'll come back and take, take a look at the next step. Okay, so we have our first board in place and let's take a look. You see that line that we made in our top support? We came in from the end, nine and five eighths inches. And now our leg right there at the tip is right in line there. And of course it's flush across the top, that 30 degree angle, okay? So now we have uh, that properly lined up. Now we have to take a look at the next two lines and it's like, connecting the dots so you see we have we have that line there that we're going to line up just like so and then the so so this was seven and a half inches right from the tip over seven and a half and then from the leg tip up was 15 and a half and all we have to do is connect those two lines together boom right like that okay and now what i'll do is I'll put in one screw. So keep in mind too about screw placement. I think it's semi-important. Is you see here, we have a screw right here at the tip and then another screw. And then when we put these two screws in, they're, they're gonna look just like that. So we're gonna put one here and one here versus going the other way. It's And the reason being is we can space the screws out just a little bit more going this way than we could this way. Um, so anyhow, but this one thing I wanna point out I don't know if you could tell it very well in the video, 
But notice right now that on the far end, that that board is a lot more this way. So this is, this is not, for lack of a better word, squared off like it's supposed to be. Okay, and that's okay. So my point is, is what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in one screw first, then we're gonna go ahead and put in our other piece the same way as we did this one. So this is a fixed, and wherever it lands, it lands, right? So this is a fixed point because we need that to be flush on the outside edge. So once we do the other one, then we can, because we just have one screw in here, we can pivot this either way we need to, to line up the two lines like we did here. So see those lines are lined up. So we need to line up those two lines on the other side as well. And when we do that, then it, you know, in theory, should all be squared up, okay? Because we're using the same dimensions and everything, same length of board, we came in the same amount, seven and a half inches, all that. So once we line those two lines up on the other side, then this board will be square, then we can come back in and put in our other screw. All right, I hope that makes some sense. But let me go ahead and get a couple of steps done and then we'll come back and show you what we did. All right, so let me again talk about what we did. So you can see there, we just have the one screw in there and, and you can clearly see, I think from this angle, that this is not in the right spot, okay? And up here, you can see now, I put in three screws because there's a big knot right there. So that screw kind of messed up a little bit. So I just put in an extra screw. That's why there's three. But uh, but you can see we're flush up here. So this this angle is, is fixed at this point. So the only thing that we have to pivot is we just move this up and you see how those two just come together perfectly. So now uh, those two lines are lined up like we need to. And now you can visually see that it's a lot more square uh, than it was. And, and in theory, um, so once you've lined those two lines up, now we can go ahead and put in our screws. So we're gonna go boom, boom, then we can come back in and add our other screw over here. Um, but just to kind of double check if you wanted to, um, you could measure from here to here, this point to this point, or you could measure the space in between, I guess, on both ends and see how square you are. You should be pretty square. Visually, it looks like I'm pretty square. Let's go ahead and, just for giggles, let's go ahead and grab a tape here and see if we can get a, a reasonably close dimension. So, in between, that's showing, what, uh, seven and three eighths. And then in between over here, that's showing basically seven and three eighths. So, Hey, that worked out, huh? So, and, and that's how it's supposed to go. So you can see with those um, intersecting lines like we did, getting it all squared up is super dead simple. So there's really not a need for a jig. You know, you could you could bust these out as long as you just recall those dimensions. Um, my, my memory's going, um, so I don't necessarily always recall those dimensions. And I have a lot of dimensions stored in my head for lots of projects. So a jig sometimes can come in handy. In this case, I, like I said, I don't think it's entirely necessary. All right, now I should point out too, because I did not point it out earlier, is what we're gonna wind up with is a bench seat height of 14 inches and a table height of 24 inches, okay? That's what we're gonna wind up with. So it's, it's uh, I've got my, uh, I've got a four-year-old and uh, nine, 10, 12, 14 year olds, 27 year olds. Um, but really all the kids, uh, even the 14 year old can sit at this, even, even me, I could sit at it. I wouldn't say I could sit at it comfortably, but I could definitely sit at it. Um, but at any rate, uh, all the, the 14, 12, 11, 10, they all could sit at it comfortably. So with just that little bit extra height, a standard picnic table seat height is 18 inches. So this one's 14. So yes, it's a little bit shorter, but still comfortable for even big kids. All right. So with that said, uh, I will go ahead and continue on this process of, uh, I've got to build one more frame just like this. 
and then we'll talk about how we uh, attach them together. All right, so I, I gave a little round over to everything, polished up, took all the black lettering off, uh, if there is any. And what I've done now is I've marked, uh, come in two inches, so I've got my little uh, four inch square here, and I just came in two inches, and then, uh, of course, I can just scrub a line, boom, right there. That gives me two inches. And I did that on both sides here, okay? And so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding our horizontal board uh, just to the inside of this line, okay? Just to the inside. So I'll show you how that works out here uh, momentarily. All right, so let me show you what I did here real quick. So you can see how this board is right here on the inside of that line. And this is kind of how I lay it down. Now, what I did was is I, on, the, on the back side of this, I measured in two and three quarter and pre-drilled, if you can see that, I started some screws, three and a half inch screws. Because we're going through one and a half inch stock into a long board, we can use three and a half inch screws. And so I did. Now over here, we have two screws pre-drilled as well. And so I've just kind of laid my frame on my table and then held this board in place and then screwed up from the bottom uh, to, to attach this board to our frame. So it's pretty straightforward. And I'll do basically the same process with the opposite side frame. So it's, it's pretty easy to, to do it that way. Um, if you have a helper to, to help hold the board, I mean, you could do it various different ways. But anyhow, um, that uh, is how we attach those. Now, here's a point I do want to make about this, is this board right here, as I think what kind of makes our uh, picnic tables a little bit different. Um, anytime you're designing and building for sale, obviously you want to think about the, the how much material it's going to take to build something um, and, and ultimately what you could sell that for. But the purpose of this is two things. It adds some stability to the table left to right, but because of this location where it's at, when we put our fence picket seat on here, this board right here is going to support the entire seat. So, uh, so that's what enables an adult to sit at it um, and, and make sure, you know, from a structural standpoint, it's gonna be very, very solid. So we're using three and a half inch screws here. Um, and so that adds some stability and sturdiness to the project as well. But having the seat board fully supported uh, to me is an important thing, uh, especially when you're using fence picket material. Now for the tabletop, it's not quite as necessary, obviously because you're not using a lot of weight. But I will tell you this, if you are um, making a longer table than uh, this little three footer, then I would recommend doing these same style braces right here. Okay, so we'll put one on either end and then we would run some boards in between and then we can span, we can make the same table. In fact, I'm gonna do it for my kids. We're gonna make the same table same physical dimensions but it's going to be longer but we're going to add our tabletop supports so that the boards will be nice and flat you know they won't sag over years if you look at uh, a lot of uh, picnic tables at Lowe's and things like that you'll see that seat sag a lot a lot of times because of the way it's put together um, they, they don't have this extra support for one but just the way they're put together they're put together inexpensively to use the least amount of material and, and still have a usable table but it's just not as robust as it could be but so to me if you're selling these tables for profit these are things that you need to remind people like this isn't just a a cheapo kids table this thing is built uh, very rugged to last for years and to hold adult weight as well I might even take a picture of me sitting on it. But when people come pick it up, a lot of times I'll, I'll literally stand on the seat and jump up and down just to show them what I'm talking about. Like, it's sturdy. It ain't gonna go nowhere. And when they see me standing on it, because I'm a big guy, 
jump it up and down. They get the they get the point. Like, okay, our, our little kids will be fine at this table. So at any rate, um, that's how we're gonna put in these seat supports. So let me go ahead and add the other one, finish up screwing, and we'll add the other side to it the same exact way. And uh, then we can move on to putting in our top boards. Okay, so you can kind of see, kind of see what we got going here. So we just took the the one side that we already had assembled. You can see I, I started my screws on both sides there and just set that first one in place right on the line there. Go ahead and put your screws in and then wherever this one winds up, you see here, it looks like it's a little off. We'll just push that into place and then screw it in place and then you know that will be relatively squared up um, just by following the lines there. So we're just gonna put in the last three screws to uh, put these two together, and then we're ready to put on our top boards. All right, so now the easy part. We're just gonna add some boards here that make up our top and our seat. Now, these boards are just sitting in place at the moment. What we're going to be using to attach our boards are some inch and five eighths screws. Um, but a couple of points to make. So when we put on our seat, these are the easier ones to put on. They're just going to be flush. So that picket is going to be flush with that point of our seat support. And it's going to overhang one inch. Okay. Um, now on the other side, it is going to also overhang an inch. And what you'll find is when you put your seat on, uh, that those two are pretty accurate. In other words, the, the overhang is pretty accurate. Now at the top, what I've done is I've done the same thing. We've got it, our edge of our board right flush with the tip. We have a one inch overhang here. I don't know if you can see that very well. Now just kind of keep that in mind as we move over here and notice that we don't have a one inch overhang over here. And that's kind of to be expected uh, because of our seats legs right now, there's really nothing they could be kicking in, kicking out a little bit. Um, so what happens is um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our two outside boards. So we're gonna put in one screw right here, one. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna push this leg in so that there is a one inch overhang here, okay? And that will kind of square the two legs up and then we'll go ahead and drill one screw there just to hold that in place. Then we'll do the exact same thing on the opposite side over here. We'll, we'll measure a one inch overhang. We'll put in one screw and then we'll measure a one inch overhang over here. Put that screw in, now we know that it's all squared up, then we can go ahead and set the rest of our boards. Okay, same thing with our seat board down here, one inch overhang, and we're, we just use two screws per board and that's it. So pretty simple stuff, uh, but, but at any rate, that's how we would go about doing it. So let me go ahead and get all that nailed into place, and then um, we'll look at the finished product. And here is your finished product. Now I'm gonna be making another one of these uh, in a six foot configuration. And I'm gonna show you uh, the bracing that we're going to be using for that, um, for the tabletop. The, everything else stays the same, but on the six foot version, we wanna support that tabletop a little bit more. Um, and of course, because we're going to go with the six foot version, uh, we are going to have to double the number of fence pickets we use. Um, instead of three fence pickets, it's going to take us six fence pickets. So I'll show you that, uh, that finished project and the, uh, table, the additional tabletop bracing. So this is the framing of a six foot table that I was talking about. I say six foot, it's really 70 inches because the fence pickets come dog-eared and I did not want to have uh, the dog-ear as part of the table, so I cut that last little two inches off.
but you can see what I did here is I did just like we did with the seat um, but just for dimensions I came in three inches on the seat we come in two and the reason I did that is to push this back a little bit to give us a little bit more leg room here um, I don't know that it makes a whole lot of difference but but at any rate I came back three inches this horizontal piece is 63 inches and then these pieces in the middle here should be roughly 14 inches mine worked out to be 13 and 7 8 so i just did a field dimension the 13 and 7 8 the computer says 14 but it's probably because i don't have these exactly placed dead on the line on one side or the other but at any rate that's uh how it goes the spacing in between these is 14 and 5 8 14 and 5 8 so each spacing is 14 and 5 8 is what it works out to be and that's it so i did a two inch overhang on the on the seats i'm going to do a two inch overhang on the top and then wherever she ends over here she ends i'm just going to do two i'm going to i'm going to lay the whole full length fence picket and then just cut off one end uh, when we're all done square it all up but it's going to have a two inch overhang so but but by doing it this way this board will catch the first fence picket and then of course these will catch the the ones that are in the middle so we won't have to worry about sagging over time everything will be nice and secure and this makes for one really solid picnic table when it's all done so that's all there is to it thanks for watching